creating a deeper and hyper personalized experience for consumers on mobile. Uh, we all know as to how each person has their own likes and dislikes, and this is, I'm sure, these hyper personalizations are very, very important. And uh, chairing this session, we will have with us uh, Shraddha Agarwal, co founder and CEO Grapes. And the panel will include Akar Kumar, business development specialist, Intercity, Indrive India. Abhishek Chadha, Senior Vice President, Interactive Avenues. Sai Tota, Head Digital Marketing, FNP. As well as Tathagat Jena, Head of Marketing, HMD Global. It's over to you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Are we sleepy? We had a good lunch? No? <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, thank you guys for inviting us and having us over. As you guys know, hyperpersonalization is becoming a very hot topic. I still remember two, three years back when we used to meet MNC clients, right? And I was sitting in either the MD's office or the marketing head office, who's like above 50, 60. He used to say, Yeah, but a jute ka ad tha na, who mujhe har jagah follow karta tha. Who aajkal, tum logo karo kya na mere liye? He's like, haan, haan, sir, aapka jute har jagah aapko follow karega. Koi tension nahi hai. And then you saw Netflix coming up with a film, right? Where they were talking about how uh, the machines work, right? It looked really spooky. And we had all these conversations and debate on social media talking about whether it is right, privacy should be there, should we do this or not. But when you talk to Gen Zs today, right? Like for me, I'm not Gen Z, but when you talk to Gen Zs today, they are like very okay with liking in a post, with subscribing to a post, saving a post, watching the video for a longer duration because they want the machine to know what are the choices. They want them to understand what kind of content would they like to be served more. Like there was a phase in my life last year when I was actually trying to build my home. So I was actually liking all furniture related, interior related companies, right? And I was getting good content from them. In fact, to be very honest, I got vendors from China then because I was being served with that kind of content. So just as an icebreaker, I'd like to start one with a round of introduction and then understand, do you guys think following or remarketing of these ads or content coming to you in a hyper-personalized way is spooky or is it good for you? Yeah, so we'll start with Abhishek here. Quickly we'll introduce and then we go that way. Thanks, thanks Shraddha. Uh, very good afternoon, uh, I'm Abhishek. I uh, head the business at uh, Interactive Avenues. Uh, we are a full service uh, uh, digital marketing agency under the IPG Media Brands house. So uh, going, going right, right at it Shraddha, so I think uh, the key word here is relevance. So the, the amount of uh, breadcrumbs that we uh, leave behind in our, uh, uh, in our digital journeys, I think that data has been collected uh, you know, voraciously over a period of time. And I think all, you know, we've got uh, two marketers here, so uh, both of them will vouch for the fact that how do we really want to make my communication more relevant and B, my consumer journey more relevant so that I make the point to purchase, I make the consumer reach the point to purchase in you know, the lowest uh, amount of friction and in the most quickest, quickest time. But more often than not, there has actually been a uh, very thin line uh, in, in uh, regulating relevance. Yeah, so it's about, uh, 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 it's about uh, you know, in, in very throwing some uh, uh, verbiage, uh, it's, it's about uh, control of frequency, the control of exposure. That's where, you really need to see on how do you want to pull back in terms of uh, making it relevant to making your ad and putting it in very uh, simple analogies to be present in a store shop in Janpath, you know, where you've got 10 people, you know, surrounding you and asking you to buy. So I think uh, relevance is important. So uh, that's where uh, hyper-personalization plays uh, a very important role and uh, we are in a time wherein uh, data, again, as I started off my uh, conversation, data is being left across at various points in many, many different fashions. And uh, uh, every marketer's dream is, you know, right now to harvest as much as possible uh, the first party and, you know, the entire thing that's been going around with Google and the deprecation. So, uh, relevance is the name of the game, yeah? Thank you, thank you so much, Abhishek. So I'll move over to Tatha. Tatha, what do you think? Is it spooky for you, or you like getting stopped? Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Tatha Agat. I come from HMD Global. Uh, 
is the home of Nokia phones. It's a Finnish organization. Yeah, quick intros. Uh, I think uh, consumers at large has moved beyond the spookiness. Just like, you know, it's an evolution. Uh, consumers have moved beyond the, you know, like we mentioned cash on delivery in the last time, and then moved beyond that. So they're increasingly comfortable. Why? Because in a lot of cases, they're also opting in to that consciously, like you said. And also in terms of, uh, the whole personalization to, and you know, Abhishek mentioned the relevance, it's about what, in what frequency and how, what you do with it. Uh, if I, de we all definitely, you know, from an anonymous emailer to something addressed to us, we all prefer that. We all, you know, like to be, you know, addressed by our own name, a simple consumer, you know, uh, relevance. And also, uh, in terms of if, what we are looking at in terms of, you know, uh, unending scrolling, we like to get some of the things served up quicker, we are all time pressed. So there also hyper personalization really helps us. Sometimes, yes, you started off by Netflix, I sometimes find myself going to another profile uh, to, you know, to switch on Netflix just because, you know, uh, I will be served up something fresh. So consumer, as consumers also we use hacks like yeah. that. So it's not spooky anymore. I, I completely agree. I just have an example to give. So I am a hardcore rom-com person. I still like my chick flicks. So whenever I'm in a mood of chick flicks, I'm watching it from my profile. But when I want to watch some action movies or some movies in which kisi ki mundi toot jayegi, kisi ka hath kat jayega, I go to my husband's profile. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sure. So I would like to have you, Akar, now on board and understand from you with a quick introduction as well that what do you find and what's your viewpoint about it? Hello everyone, um, I'm Akar. I handle the vertical of Intercity for a company called InDrive. We are cab aggregators. Um, so with respect to InDrive, uh, now that we've entered India, it was very important for us to actually tap into the hyper-personalization because the market share was already captured by Uber, Ola, and then we've got these regional players. And it's a little different from what we've dis been discussing because in our case, we look for that spookiness and we make sure that if we are launching a new city, let's say we did Mathura a while back, so we were targeting people uh, on our app on, reg on regions closer to about 100 or 200 kilometers in the age of about 50 and sending them pushes like Krishan se milne chalo, avrindavan le chale. So that kind of hyper personalization is something we rely on a lot and that's really been working out for us. It's a challenge because every region comes with their own dialect, their own languages, but that's something we are learning while we're doing it. That's really nice. So um, now that we know the general, like, I think everybody likes hyper-personalization. I don't know what will Google do when they'll stop cookies. So uh, let's take some good examples, right? And you've been working with such large brands, Abhishek. Uh, give me an example of how hyper-personalization is being used with many of your brands in content or in app or in, on the website, right? Thanks. So uh, we, we work a lot with uh, auto, yeah. And uh, auto is one category that has, uh, uh, that's, that's shown the maximum disruption in these last uh, three years in terms of uh, a, a category which is so retail heavy, plus on how the research also started uh, on, on, on digital, right? So, you know, 75% of auto consumers today, they already have made up their mind on which brand, which product to buy, even before they visited uh, the showroom. So, uh, and auto itself, as a industry, it has the most uh, fragmented data sets that are uh, available. So, there is the sales data, there is the service data, there is the prospect data, and then there is your own, uh, you know, website data. So, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, how post-COVID on how consumer journey is completely warped. Uh, one such phenomenon came uh, much, uh, you know, up, uh, uh, it, it became buoyant, very buoyant, was on your uh, hyper-local searches and near-me searches. So how we harnessed it, it, it was a very simple thing to do, is to just uh, uh, have a very smart uh, search engine specialist uh, bid on all those keywords and, you know, uh, direct it. But if somebody is, is uh, searching for your dealer in your PIN code, why would you want him to why would you push him to your landing page? Wouldn't you directly want to talk to him? Wouldn't you directly want to fix an appointment to him? 
So these were the consumer journey tweaks that we, we made. So, you know, remember the topic, it is hyper-personalization. So when we say hyper-personalization, it is about understanding the moment where the consumer is at that point of time and throwing in that relevant uh, message. So we also went a step ahead in terms of understanding what does the dealer want to talk about that point of time. If you understand the local dealers, everybody has a local offer. And as you go deeper into uh, the pop strata, so we go to tier two and tier three, there the market dynamics are different. There, in a you know in a in a city of uh, maybe 50,000 people, I know maybe everybody by name. So I would know that I would want to run this offer and run that offer. So we created a we created almost about uh, 50 plus uh, cohorts wherein we pushed very specific region wise, pin code wise communication with different call to actions. So book an appointment now, call now, inquire now, or the next step was to understand if there are any existing consumers who are still searching for it, so what was their last point of data thrown? So if somebody has already sent a lead and he's been called on and he's said that he's not interested, so we push him, a, uh, we push him an offer, right? We push him a specific offer in terms of, there is a, do you, are you interested in an offer? So we try and tweak that you know, journey across. The another segment that we used to populate on was the existing users. So the biggest chunk of uh, sales when you, when, you, when you launch a car, you know, you need to look at your own internal uh, uh, consumers and how to cross-sell. So the cross-sell was very important. So again, hyper-personalization, not just on one uh, environment, on multiple environments, and that's where the entire integration on how all marketeers are working towards is to create and ingest marketing stacks. So what's going on through your WhatsApp, what's going on through your emailer, and what you are seeing through your display banner, everything has to be in a specified linear consumer journey. Because more often than not, what happens is it's fragmented, it is disjointed. I will send an SMS to you, right? But I will record that action offline, and then I will input that you know, uh, action into an emailer, and by that time, 72 hours have passed, right? So that's how, you know, we, we built a uh, product in-house, and uh, we, we launched it, and, you know, that's given fantabulous results. So we had a uh, controlled exposed in terms of uh, the dealers who participated and the dealers who didn't participate. So on both metrics in terms of uh, walk-ins, you know, of course, Still, you know, in the industries, in orthodox industry, everything is measured by walk-ins and in, in auto. Uh, so the walk-ins were incremental, and so were the actual retails. So I, I actually agree with you because I remember 2015 is yeah. when um, this whole dealer mechanism was starting, right? Because I remember when we were, uh, I don't know how many of guy, you guys know, but auto as an industry cannot take payments from a customer for the car on their website because the payment is not centralized, right? So as a, let's say if I'm Maruti Suzuki, as a central team, I can't take payment from you if you want to book your car. It has to go to the dealer uh, bank. So you had to have dealer websites in which the payment had to be accumulated. So even the down payment of 10,000 bucks can't be taken by the central team. So if I'm looking for a car and I say near me, I would be redirected for down payment to a dealer website, right? And like you rightly said, if I'm going to a dealer website and I am in, let's say, Badarpur or some smaller town, right? And if I see a regional content or a Vernat content, or if I see the call number directly, rather than asking me to fill up a form, it will help me in getting better conversions. Very true about it. I'll come because we just talked about auto, right? Uh, how do you guys, because I'm sure uh, we were talking about COD and free delivery in the last session, and uh, I am the one person who's okay with prepayments. I remember Zomato just played this with me two days back, they've removed free delivery, right? Now they're giving you packages, five uh, deliveries. So they gave me a package of 10 delivery, and I think they, the bot realized that it's Shraddha, and then they changed it. They gave me a package of five delivery back at a higher cost. So do you guys do such hyper-personalization stuff on your app? Uh, yes, we do, and uh, well, of course, delivery cannot be totally connected to us, but for example, what we normally do is, which is really helping us, that we set recommended pricing. The thing with our app is, if you say they want to go from point A to point B, we do not set the price for you. 
you say that I want to pay X amount of money and then we connect you with a driver. We give you an, a list of options and you can select your bid. And we have a lot of AI working there also. We can talk about that later. So what we realized is that we need to guide people. And how we do that, how we have hyper-personalized that, we've taken specific routes. We've got a research team which looks behind, let's say if you want to go from Delhi to Chandigarh, what's the market rate? You know, it's, is it 16 rupees a kilometer or is it 17 rupees? Then there are different sets of cars. There's a hatchback, there's a sedan. So the per rupee kilometer changes, then we take an average of that. And we also take some data of what are the prices being going on on our app. We try, we change our recommended pricing on the basis of days, weekend, weekdays as well. And that's how we push our consumer to get the right kind of price for their respective journey. So that's one of the examples of hyper-personalization we are doing on the app on a daily basis. I was actually cracking this joke with one of my friends after I saw one of the billboards and before I met you, huh? so don't take it <laughs> offensively. Not at all. Um, so we said, imagine if I'm sitting with five of my friends outside a mall and I want to do this Dili Panti, right? You know, to Jatani Mir Bab Corner types. So I'll be like, you know what? Let me just book an in-drive because I'll search the price myself. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'll put 500 bucks for a price which is 100 bucks. So the driver will come to me first then? Well, of course, if first of all, the driver's going to know for sure that it's a joke. It's not really happening. <laughs> but see, that's the game here. We, we totally eradicated the concept of setting the price for you because it troubles the consumer and it bothers the driver also. And normally what our competitors do is, you know, they'll put a search and they'll also increase their commission rates. So the driver ends up not making a lot of money out of that. And the in, in, in drive is independent, which is what we promote that, you know, as a consumer, you don't want to pay that much. Fine. We'll give you five other options. And as a driver, we're not forcing you to travel 10 kilometers to pick up a passenger only for say 200 rupees or something. Same goes for intercity. So that's the kind of personalization we've given for both our consumers and our drivers to choose from. Well, that's very nice. So Tata, tell me, um, how do you guys use content uh, or basically, you know, hyper-personalization in managing content for, and you guys have less SKUs, right? It's not that you have amazing number of SKUs. How do you manage that? It would be difficult for you guys to do this or is it no, still a cakewalk? Actually, uh, I would say that the industry that I belong to, uh, the level of dynamic hyper-personalization, which maybe an Akar you know, can, will not be that dynamic. But then what we look at, very simple stuff, both in our own, uh, you know, while a large part of, part of our business is, is offline, whatever is online in, in terms of D2C, we look at very simply that, uh, obviously, we all use GMP, we all use, you know, a tech stack through, you know, Adobe. But then, very simple thing that we look at is that the power of recommendation. Uh, let's say we have a you know clutch of uh, there's a price band, a lot of SKUs, and then the, with that there is the you know added accessories which you have must with a phone like a, like a jelly cover to a proper cover or to neck bands or etc. All of that. So the whole idea is that uh, if a consumer is is coming and your you know your acquisition costs are anywhere traffic costs are going up, once a customer kind of you know comes, you really look at what the recommendation is and. It's a fact that rec if your you know, uh, customer is well recommended, that his revenue out of that is almost 35 to 40% of your overall revenue for, for e-commerce. So it's a high number. So therefore, we look at that, okay, if somebody has come to us new, then we do not know anything about it. We have a, he has a separate journey, but we make sure that if it is a returning visitor or it's a frequent visitor, uh, the kind of, uh, whether it's on a mobile or on a desktop, what he or she will see, even the promotional offers are also will be customized uh, to that particular you know audience. And in terms of, there is a generic in terms of high selling, you know, uh, uh, etc. Most popular, but on his uh, second visit, he will not see naturally the high selling, but the stuff that he has checked out in the past more on that line, and also purchase together, most views uh, viewed together, etc. So that's the uh, level of personalization that we realistically do. So I, I completely hear you and I think you know what we are all already too used to the kind of personalization we get currently on various websites that we buy and it's becoming a part of us. Um, one is what we see on our content piece, right? When we go to an app, we go to a website, but what I've seen recently is there's a lot of hyper-personalization that's happening on ads that we receive, right? On our feed, on our banners, etc. What goes in 
behind in making that personalization? What parameters, what cost, what theme, etc. Yeah, so uh, as, as, as Tagat said, you know, keep it simple. So it, it's very basic. Uh, I think uh, if, if you put a simple uh, uh, three by three matrix, it's, it's person, place and moment. And you put everything around it and that's how you try and understand on who that consumer is, uh, where is he at and what is the moment that he is in. And that is how you create a complete uh, series of uh, A, consumer journeys and then you create addressable segments. So it is about creating as much as granular addressable segments and uh, at, at each segment you understand what the consumer response has been. So make it more relevant on the go. And uh, that's where uh, you know we work with a lot of uh, you know, technology in-house and we have a framework which is called an addressable content engine which creates mass segments, addressable segments at scale. So, you know, between the four of us, if, if we, in our own respective unique consumer journeys uh, or our data segments or our prior uh, uh, histories, I make it, I make the consumer as, I, I make the communication as relevant as possible. It is, it's, it's not that it's not been done before, it is, you know, uh, dynamic content at scale, but you add another dimension to it, which is the moment. Right, so it was always person and place. You add the moment. You know what is the, what's the temperature trigger? Did India win the match yesterday? Right. So uh, w what is the, uh, I mean, for lack of a better example, uh, again, you know, weather comes on the top uh, because we are in, you know, <laughs> that uh, season that uh, the weather is changing uh, frequently. So all of those triggers can be fed, and your uh, your comms be made uh, more and more. Uh, uh, useful down the funnel. And, and the interesting piece to this is that, uh, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, your, your funnels across, so you will expose the consumer once and then you can build it up till the final purchase. And that's where, you know, you know, uh, we came back to your first question of uh, whether personalization is spooky or not. Till the time you are creating relevant content, till the time you are making the consumer feel that, you know, you need to buy it for a reason and just not push it. Just not, you know, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. And make it much more relevant. So, you you know, we, we stick to the basics. We follow a simple uh, framework and, uh, and you know, we work on uh, tech. And for, for a very large uh, e-commerce uh, 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 partner of ours, I, for, for their uh, Diwali sale, we created 50,000 plus uh, communication. And, you know, if you look at the kind of time that takes for you to create and we are in that world, you know. Uh, you know, of course, uh, Tadagot would agree that the creative production cost, right? So every time, you know, an agency comes back and says that, you know, boss, I need four more banners, you know, and you go back to, again, uh, you're the creative agency. So that also solves, and it gives you, in, it gives you output in terms of media efficiencies, right? So it creates that, uh, it, it, it fills up that uh, entire uh, uh, bucket for you. I mean, uh, it's a fabulous thought. I think person, place, and moment is what you said. It's a great framework. PPM, CPM, PPM. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that that's very interesting to know. Um, I would like to ask you. I, I, yeah, I no, can no, see I, you very enthusiastic to add something to no, it. Just just to add to a small point is that yeah, we are all you know at least I, I can speak for myself. Traditional marketers we all wear, and we kind of you know tra you know transition to the whole digital piece. I think the time, the beautiful thing about uh, personalization is that once you know uh, resources are never really a limiting thing. Yeah. If you if you start thinking of how do I solve this problem, uh, sometimes uh, you know uh, the problems can come from uh, I mean the solutions come come from anyone from the team. You mentioned production cost, and I have also been uh, through that era where we produce you know whatever you know uh, Hindi, and then there is you know by must there is four south. And and uh, yeah. you know Bengali and you know one more so, you know Pujati. one plus seven yeah. yeah you know and that it kind of adds to all the sort of IP cost and and the beta cost and all of that, but then you know the whole relevance of mass market advertising has been put on a, a big scan uh, you know scanner, so what we also looked at is that even in e-commerce also there are you know the the brand videos and the customer videos that it is embedded there. 
and more than just basic looking at you know, a 4 plus or a 5 rating, uh, people also look at how authentic those videos are. Are they really big you know, influencer videos or are they more authentic? So recently somebody in my team came up and said that, look, all these influencers are doing unboxing and they are not doing a very great job, even, even our top trainers can do it. You know, and then they quickly came up with the plan that, okay, we will do it in 14 languages. You just tell us one master format, uh, we will be at least 80% good as that trainer. And we, they gave the cost to me in a, you know, in a peanuts. I said, okay, fine, we will give all those videos you know, to our e-commerce partners and everything, and we'll try, and the next step would be that if I am uh, you know, searching for that same product in Delhi versus a Bangalore, I see a different customer uh, you know, unboxing video over there. So try to solve the whole production uh, yeah. issue with a more, uh, you know, jugaad, desi kind of a way. I think Hirtathagal rightly said, and that's what we've also realized, because when we started in India, we were primarily only going around north of India. So Hindi really worked for us, reaching all kind of consumers, all kind of our drivers. But slowly, when we went towards West Bengal, and one of the suggestions was that, let's, we, of course, we cannot change the whole app at once. But we started putting small banners for our passengers and for our drivers in Bengali. And then we did the same in Tamil in Chennai. And it really created a very, very big impact. Of course, all of them do understand English. And the communication on those apps, is, it's not very long. You know, there are small tidbits, book a ride, or, you know, grab this opportunity. And everybody gets that. But converting them to the regional languages really makes that great impact. And I think it's our most favorable tool for hyper-personalization as well. So what I hear is basically using the PPM strategy, creating dynamic creative optimization tools, I think, because that will help us in reducing costs, using some kind of influencers, local methodology to work on your costings, and as well as vernacular. I think that's very important today. Um, I have seen a lot of, like last year, the trend was about reels, creating more content, doing more videos. If you look at any big trend report for this year, it will be to do more with AI and ML, right? Uh, not just AI ML in terms of larger aspects, but also doing things like content, right? I work with Adani where we create a lot of content, and we're using AI to do content for them because it's to the tune of 5,000 blogs in a month somewhere, right? So that's the kind of volume we're doing for Adani One as a total group. So how do you use AI and ML um, in your organization to create this into a better way? Does this help you in terms of efficacy, or does this help you only in cost? Um. So being a transnational company, we've set some standards of our processes, and AI really, really helps us, enables it to actually uh, allocate it in every part of the world. And we rely a lot on AI and machine learning. Uh, for example, let's say uh, we normally realized, what we just saw in India, that when you go through our app, there's a comment part where you say that I want to go from A to B, this is the amount I'll share, and you can set a comment. And that's also, again, hyper-personalization. Well, Shraddha could say, I want to travel to Chandigarh from Delhi, but I have a dog with me. So you can just write, I have a pet. And, you know, the driver who's coming to pick you up can know about it, and you can choose a better partner in terms of your journey. Now, for this, we realize that a lot of passengers and a lot of drivers are randomly putting stuff in their comments. Someone wants to sell their car, they're putting it there. Someone says that I am a taxi agency, come join me. And that is how we came up with an auto ban system where we have some algorithms working around it. Just like what Airbnb does when you try to book something. You know, you cannot show your mobile number. Yeah. But that's easy to recognize because that's just a number. For us, we had to deep dive a lot. We had to see a lot of data. What, what are the kind of phrases there? Initially, we had a team of two people and for 12 hour shift and they would just go through all the feeds and find, but that's impossible, right? Yeah. So now we have AI helping us through it. Another thing which AI really helps us is driver verification. Because in India, you know, we are fond of scams. So we've got one driver registering with different names in different cars. And again, it becomes very difficult for our offline recruiters to go and check everyone. So now we have computer vision, which is trying to track who is being repeated. And there are cases like one car could have two drivers. You know, the same registry, registry number could have two drivers. One could work in the morning, one could work at night. But then again, we use the same computer vision in our cars as well. So that's how AI has really been helping us. Are you using uh, AI ML for any of your clients? Yeah, so uh, AI 
for us, uh, it, it's more, uh, it's, it's a very important fiber in our uh, entire institution's growth. So the way, uh, you know, uh, the way the industry is moving, the way the consumers are moving. So we've always worked on one simple principle is, you chase where the consumer is, and then you work it uh, around, yeah. right? So uh, I think uh, uh, I will again stick back to my already spoken words, which is about uh, creating more uh, uh, meaningful consumer journeys. So uh, specifically with this entire uh, D2C upswing, uh, where consumers are spending more and more time on the asset, on your experience. So that's where uh, enablers like your chatbots, enablers like your virtual assistants, assistants, sorry. That's where we've been trying to make AI work much more strong. So how do you create a more personalized experience when a, for a returning customer, for a new customer, for an existing customer across different sets? How do you make the journey more quicker in terms of moving into a, con uh, moving into a conversion? So that's where our uh, focus is on, wherein whatever data that you've collected of the consumer, use it in a way wherein AI is able to push and make that conversation much more closer towards a final uh, uh, conversion because there are many friction points. The consumer uh, time spent is decreasing, right? And it is moving across many platforms. So by the time he comes onto your asset with, uh, and I'm, I was talking to Tadagat earlier in terms of uh, cart abandonments, and some uh, there was a gentleman who spoke about on the earlier panel on how cart abandonments are the biggest problem, and that's where uh, AI solves for it so 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 uh, incredibly. So uh, everything you know, I, I mean, so how the industry speaks about AI is in a more uh, charming way on how AI has to be used in terms of uh, you know, uh, making those uh, wonderful uh, award-worthy campaigns. Yes, they do work well, they create an impact, but I think uh, on how AI plus ML uh, is going to shape up uh, the next uh, two, three years is going to be absolutely exciting in terms of making the consumer reach much more closer uh, to the brand. I, I completely hear you and I agree with you because uh, to, I was using this AI tool for writing a content and it showed me Gateway of India in Delhi. <laughs> and you know, you need manual checks still, irrespective of the fact that you're using AI. And while we are all talking about it, I think it's also very important for us to understand that you are using AI to train for yourself or your brand first, right? And it will take that two, three years of data and content till it comes to a level that you can use it efficiently for your brand only. So it can't kickstart from day one, right? So that, that, do you have any points on how AI and ML can really work in this entire arena of hyper-personalization? No, uh, no uh, not much to add to what Abhishek uh, said. Like we said, uh, with, uh, currently we use more of ML, uh, like I said, for our recommendation uh, engine because we really feel that that stretches our dollars you know, far better. And uh, going forward, uh, once we fix all the sort of, you know, teething issues in terms of, you know, the real ground issues as far as, you know, our, our deliveries, our, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, business in terms of stock, etc. Then the aspiration is to take it to the next level in terms of, you know, AI. Uh, so that's the realistic scenario as far as my brand is concerned. Completely. I, I think the hooter is there. I'll just end it on a note. Uh, did you guys uh, see the last Cadbury Shah Rukh Khan campaign, which was one of the most viral campaign. Can I have see some hands? How many of you saw it? Did you guys like it? Yeah, I think I, I got that creative back from my clients so many times on WhatsApp. That was one of the classic examples of AI and ML, right? How they used it and how Rephrase is using it. Uh, then uh, Zomato or Swiggy came up with the Roshan campaign, Zomato, right? And they spoke about how we are doing it. Um, just industry insights and small talks. The first season of uh, that campaign was half manual, half AI. The second season was full AI, right? So that's how, that's how AI is. It can't go right in the first go. So you need to really use it, learn it, and evolve over it when you're doing such campaigns. But hyper-personalization is going to stick. Cookies, no cookies. Uh, opt-in, no opt-in. I think it's a way, as long as you're not doing any fraud, you're not going to flee away from the country. <laughs> you're not cheating. <laughs> 
it's, uh, it's a good thing for the entire industry as well as for marketers, and that's where we would like to uh, end our note on. Is there any questions you guys want to ask? Because we only were on one hooter. So we can take the next hooter. Yeah, please, go ahead. So if I and yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, this is the uh, this question is the flavor of the season. Yeah. So it, it, I just have a simple answer to this. This is creator first party data, right? So invest in that. Invest in your data. Invest in cultivating your data. You start the first step is start cultivating, then start enriching it. All the stacks in the world will come later, right? Uh, it's about uh, getting back to the basics. The deprecation is going to come sooner or later, right? Uh, we might, it might get stalled, it might get pushed. It's just that the verdict is getting pushed, but the verdict is going to come. So uh, there is no rocket science to it. Just create a first party data, that's all. Cool. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for being nice and patient with us. Uh, I hope the session was really insightful for you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>